wonderful. You're already native North Carolinians. Uh, my name is Joanne Marshall, and it's a great pleasure to welcome you here to this fourth international conference on evidence-based library and information practice. You don't know how much everyone on our organizing committee has looked forward to this day, <laughs> because as you all know, anyone who's been involved in organizing a conference, especially one of an international nature, knows just how much planning goes into that. And we are very happy that you are here because you are truly the ones who are making this conference happen. It is your papers, your posters, uh, the keynote speakers who are going to join us uh, for their presentations, who are really turning this into the evidence-based fest that we know that's going to be. Uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of background, and please go ahead just eating your breakfast. This is the idea, and I know that there will be other local colleagues who will be joining us in the next while, but I wanted to sort of have enough time to just give you a little bit of background on the conference and uh, before we had introduced our keynote speaker. Uh, so just let me say that the way in which this came about was that in 2005 I was invited to the uh, third international conference that was held in Brisbane, Australia. And you probably uh, are aware that there have, this is the fourth. The first one was started by Andrew Booth, who's here at the table, uh, in the United Kingdom. Uh, the second one was in Canada, in Edmonton, Alberta. And actually I was born in England and I grew up in Alberta, so there seemed to be some connection there. Uh, and uh, then I was in Toronto and finally here in North Carolina. But in any case, I was there. And when I realized that you know, it would be the fourth conference and it had not been in the United States, I thought this would be a wonderful opportunity to host people here. And the Chapel Hill, Durham, Research Triangle area is such a research intensive environment that it just seemed like the perfect place and the perfect time for all of us to get together. Uh, in this world where increasingly we are communicating virtually and especially in our field of library and information science, that's a cornerstone of what's happening to us right now. Everything that we work with is being transformed uh, into bits and bytes and we're communicating and able to do so many more things electronically. But getting together in real time with real colleagues from all over the world is truly a gift for all of us and I know that we're really going to enjoy our time together. So for better or for worse, Andrew and the organizing committee there uh, accepted my invitation and what uh, you'll experience over the next three days plus two days of continuing education is the result. So we hope that you have a wonderful time. I must say my husband Victor and I, some of you had a chance to meet him last night and who will be around as well uh, during the conference here and there. Uh, we've just so enjoyed our time. It's now our eighth year in North Carolina and it's just been uh, a very happy move and just an opportunity to work with so many people. Our Canadian contacts have continued but also many, many around the world. Uh, as you can tell from your program, we actually have two hosts, uh, one being the School of Information and Library Science at the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, and our Dean Jose Marie Griffiths is with us today, and also the UNC Institute on Aging. And you may say, well, what does aging have to do with the Fourth International Conference on Evidence-Based Library and Information Practice? Well, it so happens that I'm very fortunate. I have a, an appointment with both the school and the institute because I'm doing uh, research, as is Jose Marie, actually, on the aging of the library and information science workforce and looking at workforce issues in our field. And I have colleagues there. So both units were very supportive of this conference and Diane Wurtzinger who is the events planner and conference planner for the Institute on Aging is the one who really helped me on a day-to-day -day basis with that end of things and then of course Carol Perryman who was the co-chair of the conference uh, I, th I don't know we have we've had a very intimate relationship shall we say over the last 18 months she's just been a wonderful person to work with and then of course Andrew on the other side of the Atlantic so we have our two hosts, and then we have an executive organizing committee, and um, many of those people are here with us. And I wanted to put together a group that would be representative of the earlier conferences. Uh, so um, Carol is there, our co-chair. Andrew Booth he is here from the UK. Jonathan Eldridge, who has been involved in evidence-based 
library and information practice for many years and is very well published and has attended all of those conferences. So he was our U.S. representative on the executive organizing committee and helped with some of the early decision making. Helen Partridge, who organized the um, Australian conference in uh, Brisbane, is not here, but Jill Hallam, her colleague, is. And Jill was also very involved in organizing that. So we, we're really pleased to have our Australian represented, re representative. Uh, Denise Kufogianakis, a uh, Canadian representative from the University of Alberta, which is home of the Evidence-Based Library and Information Practice Journal, is also with us. I did list two other people there on our executive organizing committee because I felt they were so instrumental in everything that will happen over this five-day period. Diane Wurtzinger, who I mentioned earlier, the event planner from the Institute on Aging, and Dan Danielle Baraski, the librarian who at the Institute who also served as our webmaster. So those uh, people truly deserve our thanks. Susan Rathman-Grubb, another doctoral student at SILS, as we call our school, uh, has also been extraordinarily helpful in organizing the registration. And Cheryl Thompson and Mary Wilkins Jordan have been involved in, in volunteer coordination. So that, but that's only part of it. If you do look on page two of your program, you'll see a whole international program committee, which was chaired by Andrew and co-chaired by Carol. And they were responsible for uh, reviewing and selecting the papers and posters that you will uh, enjoy at this conference. But there were many others on this list from many, many different countries. Uh, I did particularly want to bring greetings from Lorianne Roy, the incoming president of the American Library Association. Lorianne was on our international uh, program committee. Uh, she's a professor at the University of Texas, but she's at another conference. Otherwise, she said she certainly would have been here. And we have international liaisons around the world from Sweden, New Zealand, Denmark, um, Spain, the Czech Republic, Finland, Japan, Serbia, and the Netherlands. Uh, so it's truly, truly, it's one of the things that I think characterizes this, which is so exciting because this transformation that we have to make towards a more knowledge-based, more evidence-based professional practice is one that is going to affect all of us. And then, of course, we have a local organizing committee. And we have a, a sister uh, school of library and information science here at North Carolina Central University. It's um, the only um, LIS program in an historically uh, black university in the US. So we're really pleased to have their um, collaboration in this endeavor. And uh, Kalani Ankum, a professor there, will be involved in one of the continuing education um, programs. Uh, at the end of the conference. Uh, but you can sort of see on that list, uh, we're actually, th there is a great rivalry, you should know, between, between the University of North Carolina and Duke University. Duke is in Durham, and actually this hotel is officially in Durham, but it's in the middle of what we call the Research Triangle Park. And the anchors of that park are the three universities, uh, the research universities, Duke University in Durham, um, UNC Chapel Hill in Chapel Hill, and North Carolina uh, State University in, in Raleigh. And uh, we all have great sports rivalries. You've no doubt heard of the various uh, sports teams involved. And actually, I'd like to say that the UNC, that beautiful blue color of our sky and in the background of our, our logo slide, um, is uh, the most popular sports color in the world. And we're glad it is because it helps to fund the university when you buy all of that Carolina blue paraphernalia. So do make sure you go home with some of that. <laughs> Oh dear, but I would just like to ask anybody on the Executive Organizing Committee or the International Program Committee or if international liaisons or on the Local Organizing Committee, could you all please stand and let us acknowledge your contribution? Please stand on all the people who are going to be speaking too. Just up, 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 please. I know there are more of you here. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, you will meet many more people. So the other group that I really have to thank here, and uh, really we couldn't start without doing this because none of this would have happened uh, without our hosts that I mentioned already, but we also have four financial sponsors. And um, EBSCO Information Services provided you with those beautiful bags. And I believe Ellen Westling is here. Is Ellen here? Ellen, would you stand and just be acknowledged? And Lynn Fortney, is Lynn here? Okay, she will be here. 
So we would very much like to thank EBSCO, and they will also be sponsoring our entertainment. Now, we have a lovely, um, the UNC Jazz Ensemble will be entertaining us this evening, but the star performers are going to be on Tuesday night when, believe it or not, the name of the band is the Bearded Pigs, um, <laughs> and they are a wonderful um, librarian band that ha is gaining fame. They got their start with the Medical Library Association, but as you can see, it's spreading worldwide. And we, uh, there is a link on our website to the Bearded Pigs. And uh, T. Scott Pluchak, the head of the Bearded Pigs, perhaps he, he, would you identify yourself, T. Scott, so that we, yes, there he is, <laughs> T. Scott himself. So we are going to have fun. I mean, I think that that is one of the things that really characterizes this whole thing as well. Our themes are international, um, and also that we want to offer you a really good time in North Carolina, and I think that's will happen. Will happen. The other thing that I think truly characterizes this conference, and it was very much, um, you know, a notion that Andrew was really wanted to move ahead with, is that uh, the third conference was called Evidence-Based Librarianship. This time, the acronym is Evidence-Based Library and Information Practice. And to my mind, what that does is expands the range of the application of these concepts to all types of libraries, academic, public, and special. As you know, evidence, one of the most well-known evidence-based applications is in med medicine and the health sciences. So health sciences librarians were very early to jump onto this bandwagon and to think that this idea of evidence-based practice should not only characterize the services they provided to their library users, uh, but also to their own practice. But now we're starting to see even and many other fields as well um, and many other settings starting to uh, adopt this. So um, Harvard Business Review ha in the last couple of years has published an, an article on evidence-based management. There's a book out now on evidence-based management uh, in, in, the, in the business world. Uh, we're going to have one of our um, keynote speakers come and talk to us about evidence-based social work and so forth. Just one moment. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I think this is really going to be important for us to relate to these other fields, but also to move it out into all areas of our profession. So I see this very much as the beginning of something that we will all take back to whatever other associations that we're involved in. So on, um, I wanted to just reflect for a moment on, what, on the program itself. And the, really, the key to the program for you will be this blue sheet, which lists, uh, in a very brief form, the various um, things that are happening at any one time and their locations. The locations are not in the, in the paper program, because we were you know, working on things, moving things around till the very last minute. But you'll see all of those things. I should also mention that the registration desk will be um, moving from day to day. And on page two of the program, you can see exactly where that registration desk will be. And any assistance that you need, just do check at the registration desk. And uh, they will be able to assist you. Uh, but we, we will be having one or more keynotes every day. Today we're starting with one this morning, but then there will be another one as part of our lunch meeting in the same room. But we'll have a break from 10.30 to 11, and then you will go off to concurrent sessions. And you have three choices of concurrent sessions. You can see the titles list, listed on the blue sheet. And of course, in the program, you'll find uh, the comp complete author information, affiliation, and the abstracts. Uh, there will be full papers going on the conference website after the conference, and we would like to encourage all of the uh, paper and poster presenters that if you feel you have a paper that you want to expand uh, and submit to the Evidence-Based Library and Information Practice Journal, I know Denise and her colleagues would love to have that submission. So having uh, presented here and being part of our web-based proceedings certainly doesn't preclude you then uh, going on to publish um, uh, there. So we hope that you will in fact take, take on that opportunity. There, you did find there is a yellow errata sheet uh, that is in the conference program and everything that has changed in the program, at least so far, is on that sheet. Although I would just like to point out that there will be one more paper in se concurrent session C1 um, this afternoon from 3.30 to 4.30. Um, and there will be a second paper in uh, that session um, to add to Alison Brettel's paper, and that one will be by Carol 
Perryman, it's a very interesting paper called Finding Our Foundation, Analysis of the LISA Database for Research Article Retrievability. And I think uh, many of us are aware that we were, um, for a uh, a field like us, we're in the business of providing access to information, that access to our own knowledge base is not terribly good. And Carol has done some excellent research looking at the detail of this issue in detail and is uh, sort of carrying on with that also in her own doctoral work. So I think you'll find that to be a very, very interesting paper. So I mentioned in, in the, uh, my introduction in the program that this is the Tar Heel State. And I'm sure you're wondering, those of you who are not from North Carolina, what are those darn Tar Heels? What are they talking about? And every once in a while, you'll see a little blue foot around on some type of illustration or you know, some, some, some piece of literature describing the state. And it'll be a little blue foot with a black um, dot on the heel. Well, this, this goes back to the Civil War times. And uh, the, the soldiers from North Carolina were considered to be very brave and very persevering. And uh, at the time, um, the, the, um, one of the main industries in North Carolina was shipbuilding. And they used a lot of pine tar. And there were other things that were related to all the pine trees that grow in North Carolina. So uh, the story goes that one of the Confederate uh, generals or, or one of the generals actually said after the particular battle where the North Carolina soldiers fought particularly bravely, look at those Tar Heel boys, you know, thinking that, you know, and, and so he referred to them as the Tar Heels and the name has stuck. I mean, sometimes we joke, well, they couldn't run away because they were actually stuck down with the tar, but that's not really part of the story. But no, but I, but I must say, since I've been here, the Tar Heels are truly a wonderful people. They are, in fact, very, very persevering, and they really stick to things, and they really get things done. Um, so that's what's going to happen at this conference. So uh, I just want a couple of other things. Uh, we have some wonderful bus tours uh, that are laid on uh, on um, Tuesday night. One will go to South Point Mall and the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill. Uh, the other will go to Duke University, and there are still spaces available on those bus tours, and it really is a wonderful way to see some of the country and to see two great universities, and the Duke Gardens are absolutely lovely. Uh, UNC is the oldest state university in the nation. It was founded in 1793. You will see some of those old, early colonial buildings. You'll see the old well, the bell tower, the symbols of the university, so do come along with us on those tours. Uh, you can sign up again at the registration desk. And for those who are exercise oriented, there are several opportunities. Uh, there's a walking and jogging trail map inside the back of your program, which will take you through Research Triangle Park. And it's an unusual area because there are no high rise buildings here. This is the highest building in the area. And if you go up to the 10th floor, you can get a very nice view. But it's, it's really actually hard to see the terrain uh, because it's so hilly here. We're in the Piedmont or foothills. Uh, and uh, Gold's Gym is right behind the hotel. You, for $10 a day, you can take advantage of all of their classes and fitness equipment. The hotel also has a pool outside. A little cool, but it's going to get warmer every day uh, But uh, between now and when we finish. But uh, you can certainly take advantage of those things. And there are also yoga sessions tomorrow morning from 7 to 8. And I have to tell you, this is evidence-based yoga. I went to um, a workshop uh, a few weeks ago at Duke University in the Center for Integrative Medicine. And uh, everything they do is evidence-based. There is a systematic review on meditation. There are 28 studies currently being funded by the National Institute of Complementary and Alternative Medicine, uh, NIH, on the effects of yoga. So I can assure you this is a very beneficial practice. And I invite you to join me. So with that introduction, I would like to ask our Dean, Yosei Marie Griffiths, if she would just come forward and just give you a welcome on behalf of the university and the school. Thank you very much, Joanne. Good morning, everyone. And welcome to, um, I guess, the Research Triangle area. Um, and in particular, I have to let you know that uh, we at the School of Information and Library Science are just delighted to be able to co-host this conference with our partners, the Institute on Aging. Um, to see such an international audience coming together to talk about notions of evidence and how evidence can be used in library and information practice is very, very near and dear to our hearts. Um, the school has uh, promoted evidence-based learning and evidence-based practice throughout its curriculum. Our graduate students all, uh, all uh, 
conduct research um, projects, um, and they have to do everything associated with those research projects, including uh, writing a, uh, a paper at the end. And um, we have continued to try to promote notions of evidence-based approaches. Um, it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention Maybe somebody mentioned it last night, but um, we call this part of the world the southern part of heaven. And you will find out as the weather goes from where it is this morning through the next few days why it's called the southern part of heaven. It is a de delightful place. Um, the southern hospitality is well known around the world, so please uh, enjoy the hospitality that you receive. It's one of the most open and friendliest places that I've come across. But the other thing that I found is there are very, very few barriers to collaboration here in North Carolina. And I say it not just from the perspective of the University of North Carolina, which is in fact the most barrier-free to <laughs> interdisciplinary activity that I found in, in my many years in the field, but also the collaborations that do exist except on critical basketball, football games, soccer games, etc., between the University of North Carolina, Duke University, North Carolina State, North, North Carolina Central, and other universities around the state. It is a truly collaborative place. And so where better to bring people from a variety of different parts of the profession to come together to talk about how to um, use and promote evidence-based approaches. So I think you've got a wonderful program here. Um, to, uh, I will be here for today. I, I can't be here tomorrow. I have to leave town, but I will be here um, all of today. And um, I encourage you to uh, take advantage not only of the sessions, but of the, um, uh, the social events and the times in the breaks to network and get to know each other. And um, we we'll look forward to seeing this conference continued. Before I sit down, though, I think um, I should, in fact, um, ask Joanne to stand and for all of you to thank Joanne for her efforts. And I, I know she's been working hard for over a year on this. And so, Joanne, thank you very much. It's been suggested that before we go on, we should probably take a 10-minute break and just allow you to use the facilities. There are restrooms straight across, or if you probably have time to run back up to your room, those of you who are staying here, if you want to. And then I'll ask Andrew Booth to come back and give his words of welcome and introduce our keynote speaker. So according to my watch, it's about eight minutes past nine. So we'll, we'll reconvene at 20 past nine, just to give you a little bit of a break. Okay, thanks very much.